Uh, Pastor, uh, regarding about uh, Acts chapter 2.36, God made him Lord and uh, Christ. Should we look at it that uh, just upon the resurrection, uh, Jesus became the Christ as well? Because uh, you have established that uh, he became uh, Lord with the power, uh, and that's the declaration. But it is also the declaration of him being the Christ as well. Well, in the sense that he has now fulfilled <clears throat> what he came to be the Christ as. Uh, he came to be the Christ in order that he may become prophet, priest, and king. And it is the resurrection that completes it. So it's like uh, saying that, uh, yes, he is the Christ from the time of his birth. Uh, the angels called him Christ. Uh, even at his birth, he already was the Christ. But the Christ who was to complete the mission of being Christ, of being Messiah. And it became complete at his resurrection. So that we can also say, Pastor, that that is the realization of the Old Testament uh, prophecies about yes. Jesus. Yes, especially in terms of, <clears throat> we, we saw in our study of the kingly office, we began with Old Testament anticipation of the coming king. And this is pervasive in the Old Testament, starting with the Davidic Covenant. Uh, from the Davidic Covenant, God's people have been expecting a son of David to become king. And there has always been disappointment with the subsequent kings of the Davidic dynasty until the last of them, Zedekiah, uh, and then Judah fell, became exiled. But in the exilic prophets like Ezekiel, you will find the pervasive substance of prophecy is about a coming king. So they anticipated it. But the question is, when did he become king? Uh, our next, after the break, we will be dealing with when the transition happened. Other questions? Okay, let's take a break.